We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this regular VSIS Forum 2022 Open Consultation Process Meeting. My name is Vladimir Stankovic, uh, and I will be moderating this session. Uh, and um, I'm very happy to be here with um, the co-organizers of the VSIS Forum. So besides ITU, uh, the co-organizers are colleagues from UNESCO, UNDP, and UNCTAD. Before I move on with the presentation uh, of the ongoing activities, plans for the future uh, VSIS Forum 2022, I would like to invite colleagues from UNDP and UNCTAD, uh, Minerva and Scarlett, to share um, some comments with the audience and how are their organizations planning to contribute and working towards the VSIS Forum 2022. Uh, Minerva, if you may, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Vladimir, and um, good morning, colleagues. Good morning from New York, Dejis. Greetings from UNDP in New York. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Once again, we see each other every year, and it's such a pleasure to, to work closely with ITU, UNESCO, about to come in, I believe, Joe from UNESCO. And with the um, past um, years meetings of, of this, uh, at this point in the preparations for the Wizards Forum, we always try to give the most time to, to listening to, to suggestions from you, from the community, on how to shape and ensure that the Wizards Forum is, is successful. It's always been so each year. And one of the things that we would really like to hear from you today is how we are seeing how our partners on the ground are, are really dealing with uh, the COVID response. We see how a lot of people, governments have been using digital technologies, ICTs, to respond to the challenges of the pandemic. And there is no greater understanding, as, as we can see, of the role of technology. And what we would like to hear from you also is how we can ensure that in the responses that we are able to support the building of local capacities, especially for, for building forward better. And also for how the efforts on the ground that you lead are, are also contributing to the achievement of the SDGs. There's only nine, eight more years ahead of us. And we have regressed a lot uh, due to the impact of the pandemic. I will keep my, my, my greetings short and more, more hopefully, um, discussions in, in, in the coming hour. So I give back the floor to you, Vladimir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minerva. We very much appreciate uh, your personal and the UNDP efforts uh, in moving uh, the VSIS implementation forward. Uh, I would like now to uh, invite Scarlett, our colleague from UNCTAD, to um, share her statement. Thank you very much, Vladimir. So um, from uh, UNCTAD in Geneva, I would like to welcome all of you to this first uh, meeting of the open consultation process for the WISIS Forum. UNCTAD, as always, is very happy to uh, collaborate with the other organizations as a co-organizer, but also, as uh, you may know, we are co-facilitators of the e-business action line. So we have a particular interest in everything that has to do with the digital economy. So we are looking forward after these two years of pandemic to see what the stakeholders have to say about the impact of these past two years um, in their uh, economies and how digitali digitalization can help them um, recover and uh, whether it has been a factor in resilience and, in, and who is being left out and who should be um, included in these recovery efforts. I would uh, just like to note that during the time that the WISIS Forum will take place next year, 
We will also be having it on TED, our e-commerce week. It will take place from 25 to 29 April. So it's right in the middle of the WISIS Forum um, 2022. And we uh, would also like to invite all the stakeholders to take part in this e-commerce week, which will look more uh, in detail at the uh, e-commerce and digital economy implications for development. And in particular, we will be talking about data uh, governance and digitalization for development. So uh, we welcome you to that. And uh, we also are eager to hear uh, any inputs that the stakeholders will have over the coming months to make sure that the WISIS forum is uh, relevant and useful for everyone going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scarlett. Again, uh, thank you and uh, all the colleagues in UNCTAD for leading facil facilitation of particular visa section lines and for uh, contributing to the co-organizing of the VCS forum. Um, we are still waiting for our colleagues from UNESCO to join, uh, but in the meanwhile, um, I would like to um, present the presentation on the ongoing plans and i would like to invite um, the hosts to enable me to share the screen in the meanwhile uh while we wait for um, our colleagues from IGF to uh, allow me to share the screen. Uh, I would just like to uh, inform all present here today that um, we have started and issued all the calls for the open consultation process earlier this year. We have already received um, lots of input and submissions and um, not only for the OCP, but also for other relevant uh, ongoing calls, um, especially related regarding the VISI stock taking, including the VISI prizes and other special repositories that I will be sharing more with you now. So I hope that uh, you all see the screen. Okay, so once again, uh, this is Forum 2022. Uh, this particular process uh, has been led, co coordinated, co-organized by many UN agencies, as you can see on this screen, besides in ITU, UNESCO, UNDP, and UNCTAD. Many other UN agencies, sister agencies, uh, have been leading facilitation or supporting facilitation of the 18 business action lines. And the new ones are coming and joining uh, this panel. Some history of the business uh, process, uh, as it was announced in 1998 and proposed by the member state at the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference. The two-year, two-phase summit was held in 2003 and 2005, and this is basically the, um, the structure, the bottom of um, bottom line of what we are all here for today. Uh, in 2005, we were given the mandate by the United Nations General Assembly to work on implementation of this section lines. And in 2015, we have been given a positive review by the United Nations General Assembly and given a second mandate until 2025. This was also the year, uh, as you may know, when the new sustainable development agenda of United Nations was um, uh, established and launched uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it was very timely for the business process to align its business section lines with the SDGs. So everything that we do at the business process and this forum is also collecting uh, information on how it's advancing the 17 SDGs. Since 2009, the business process uh, also witnessed the, uh, the launch of the business forum. Annual events have been held since 2009. And um, as uh, Scarlett mentioned, the uh, next business forum uh, is planned to start you know, on 15th of March with the final week planned for 30th of May to 3rd of June. We all will look forward to the activities next year and beyond that towards 2025. Uh, this is forum and this is process 
have been strengthened and, and growing by the increased number of stakeholders and all those who are contributing greatly. Uh, we all appreciate and would like to use this opportunity to thank for many contributions that were uh, provided to us by various stakeholders. As I mentioned, all this is action lines have been linked to the sustainable development goals. This has been done by the group of experts from the College of the United Nations. And uh, each of uh, individual this is action line has been linked to some of the SDGs. We invite you to check this this is SDG matrix in full details on the dedicated web page. ITU, let me also share on behalf of ITU, has been contributing to the VCS implementation since the very beginning and the new ITU contribution to the VCS implementation of the VCS outcomes uh, is, uh, has been launched and uh, carefully prepared on with all the activities that have, uh, colleagues from ITU and uh, activities and processes contributing to this implementation are available online for you to review. Uh, also, this is section line roadmaps are also available for your particular attention. So now going back to the annual event, the VCS Forum 2022. Uh, as uh, you see on the screen, uh, and due to the ongoing um, challenging times, we have been running VCS Forum fully virtual since 2020. And in 2021, we are hoping to have a part of the VCS Forum next year in a hybrid format, similar to what we are witnessing here at the IGF. Um, we are yet to announce uh, the full details of how we will continue in this hybrid format. But so that you know, um, prior to this virtual format, we were, we were holding the VCS Forum on a, in, in a format of uh, 150 physical you know, sessions, workshops, high level uh, events that were all done in the course of one week. However, now since we have to be uh, you know, using the virtual platform, uh, in order for us to reach out to all regions and to accommodate all the requests to hold workshops and sessions, uh, we will be, we have been planning and implementing the VCS Forum uh, in a longer period as this will be followed in 2022. We will start the VCS Forum on the 15th of March with the final week, as I mentioned, 30th of May to 3rd of June. The open consultation process, as you know, this is forum is inclusive and crowdsourced multi-stakeholder approach. We invite everyone, all of you to contribute to this shaping of the program and agenda of the VCS forum. And this is done through the OCP. As you see, uh, the launch was done in on 19th of August. And today we are having the first meeting where we are updating the community on the ongoing plans and activities. And the next phase uh, three, the second meeting will be held on 31st of January, also virtually. For more information, we invite you to follow the VCS Forum 2022 website. All submissions are to be submitted online. They are carefully reviewed. And as I mentioned, taken into account, we will come back to you before the deadline. After the deadline, 7th of March, when we'll collect all the input and start shaping the, agenda, the program and agenda of the forum, thanks to your submissions. So please, I invite you to join this opportunity and share your proposals for workshops, for virtual exhibitions, uh, for speakers. Also, if you would like to be one of the high-level track facilitators, do not miss this opportunity. One of the major part of the VCS forum is the high level track, which consists of numerous high level policy sessions, ministerial roundtable, and high level dialogues. We will be uh, informing more about the topics of the high level dialogues later in, in the course of the OCP. And we do invite all of you to consider joining the high level track. And of course, ministerial roundtable is a closed meeting for the governments. The open call for the high level track facilitators is ongoing. We do invite all of you to nominate yourselves or those you believe can handle the moderation of the high level tracks. 
this is something that uh, we have been running since the very beginning of the high level track and very proud to present the diverse community of high level track facilitators from different regions, gender balanced, and um, from different stakeholders. So please use this opportunity to explore and nominate those that you believe can be um, taken into account for the next high level track facilitators at the Forum 2022. Another call that was launched in September is the VC stock taking. As you know, it's a part of the VCS mandate given and coordinated by the ITU since 2004. It's an international repository of the good work of good ICT work that is improving and in, you know lives around uh, the world, impacting economic, social, environmental development, um, implementing this section lines, and since 2015 also helping advance the sustainable development goals. Please visit the website, uh, the platform, the stock taking, this is stock taking, learn more about the previous reports and reporting and join this community by submitting the ICT projects and initiatives that are making impact. Some of the this is stock taking reports that were launched last year include the regular global report. Also success, success stories is a report for particularly designed for those winning and champion projects of the VCS prize contest. I'll tell you more about it in later. Another uh, important stock taking repository that was launched in April 2020 is on the COVID-19. And finally, uh, we have been working with other new repositories that I will be briefing you on later. Another this is stock taking and this is forum activity is the VCS photo contest. We're inviting all of you to submit and promote this contest to collect the pictures from the ground, photos that are depicting how ICTs are making impact on the ground. Deadline 7th of March. This is prior. Take a good note of the deadline is 21st of January. We are entering the last um, phase of the submission phase as we are entering also uh, holiday season in some part of the world, you may want to plan to book your calendar to make effort to submit to this global prize. Last year, we have reached a record uh, number of submissions, more than 1,260. So as being greatly appreciated by the community, we do uh, uh, invite you to consider promoting the good ICT work, your ICT work and others that you believe should be promoted. This is to be done online at the VCS Prizes uh, website. And following the submission phase, 21st of January, we will be selecting and um, expert group will be nominating 360 submissions. These 360 will consist of 20 most relevant submissions in each of 18 VC section line categories. And then we will provide opportunity to the public to cast their votes in the online voting phase, which is to take place throughout the month of March. Following that, the expert group will be deciding who will be the winner among the top five most voted projects. The rest of the runner-ups will be considered champions. This innovation has been done, of course, due to <clears throat> the correspondence and um, proposals from the stakeholders that not only winners are awarded, but also champions. And the new development is that we no longer nominate all the valid submissions received, but only 360. So we are also um, promoting and celebrating the 360 nominees. This is to help the community to be able to review carefully and cast votes to be able to digest all the um, projects equally before they select their favorites. Some of the special tracks that have emerged uh, during the VCS forum since its very beginning and some of the new ones are listed uh, in the following, in the following um, presentation slide. 
and uh, I would like to um, move on and present them in more details. But just to name ICTs and youth, ICTs and gender mainstreaming, ICTs and emerging technologies for sustainable development, ICTs for well being, happiness, and peace, ICTs and accessibility for uh, persons with disabilities and specific needs, ICTs and older persons, cybersecurity. The new ones uh, that we'll introduce this year is the ICTs and indigenous peoples and cultures, ICTs for developing countries and LDCs particularly, and ICTs for Industry 4.0. The ICTs and Older Persons Track has been established and launched in 2020. And due to the high interest from the community, uh, we have been growing this track uh, tremendously uh, with support of um, various stakeholders, including the Global Coalition on Aging, with whom we have successfully held the hackathon last year on the topic aging well with ICTs. And also with this partner and other stakeholders, we have launched the special prize called Business Forum Healthy Aging Innovation Prize. The outcomes of this, this special track have also take part in uh, various uh, interventions, policy making decisions. One of them, uh, notably United Nations Secretary General Report. As I mentioned, um, as part of this success at the Visis Forum and this special track, and not only that, as part of the United Nations and WHO decade on healthy aging, the ITU has also decided to, to, to celebrate during its World Telecommunication and Information Society Day on the 17th of May in 2022, also um, the year of older persons. So we do invite you to not only contribute to this special track, but also to be part and take part of this global celebration of um, ITU's um, birthday and the World Telecommunication Information Society Day. The ICT is an accessibility track established in 2019. We have launched the VISIS Accessibility Day However, this community has been working with the Visis Forum since its very beginning in 2009. They've been growing the community and the number of sessions each year have uh, been growing and have been uh, enhanced. Uh, some of them uh, also having full uh, accessible, accessible um, options, including the sign language. We have recently celebrated the International Day of um, of accessibility and um, this was held and celebrated through the VISIS talks. I invite you all to explore and learn more from the session that was held on 3rd of December and available at the VISIS Forum 2022 website. The new session uh, and track, uh, the new special track that we are working with our colleagues from UNESCO and other uh, stakeholders is on the indigenous uh, languages. We are uh, planning to hold um, a particular uh, activities, including the special prize on ICTs for preserving and revitalizing and promoting indigenous languages. Uh, and also we are uh, looking forward to launch um, a hackathon that will also help um, this particular cause. For more information on this, please stay tuned and follow uh, this is social media channels, and also the Visis Forum website. If you have not signed up yet for the Visis newsletter, Visis Flash, please do so. This is the way how you can be also informed about ongoing activities. As I mentioned, one of the new things that we have started since 2017 is the Visis Talks. Prior to that, we have been working closely with the local Geneva TED Talks. And um, upon the proposals from the stakeholders, the VISIS talks were launched and we are, have been witnessing uh, really inspirational stories from the ground from, from the VISIS community each year now. Going beyond the VISIS forum uh, where the VISIS talks were held traditionally, the VISIS talks now are taking place virtually beyond the VISIS forum. So this year we have launched the fourth season 
with six episodes that already took place since September. They're all available in the recordings and the description, the list of speakers on the Business Forum 2022 website. This is Forum Hackathons. As I mentioned, we are looking forward to the hackathon uh, together with our colleagues from UNESCO on ICTs for Indigenous Languages. As you know, uh, UNESCO has launched the Decade of Indigenous Languages, um, and we would love to contribute and invite all of you to contribute to this decade uh, launched by UNESCO. Uh, and one of the activities that will be contributing to this is the hackathon next year at the Visis Forum, where we will be linking the global action plan for making a decade for action for indigenous languages, Visis Action Lines and SDGs. Another hackathon that uh, Visis Forum uh, is working with is the designing a sustainable future using ICTs together with our partners, the Telecommunication and Digital Government Regulatory Authority from the United Arab Emirates. We do invite you to learn more about both hackathons at the Visis Forum website. And we will be uh, promoting the outcomes of both hackathons throughout the Visis Forum 2022. The work of the UN Regional Commissions is also very important for the implementation of Visis at the regional level. Annual meetings are held uh, at the Visis Forum. Uh, the chair of the Visis Regional Commission Group currently is the UN ESQA. And we do invite you to join the Arab High Level Forum and Conferences, the Digital Development and Digital Cooperation that will be organized by colleagues from UNESCO on, from 13 to 23rd of December. So this is a particular uh, forum that will gather all the regional Visis stakeholders to discuss the implementation of Visis at the regional level. There will be a particular VISIS session called VISIS Action Lines for Achieving SDGs that will be held on the 15th of December 2021 at 1 p.m. Central European time. For more information, please visit the VISIS Forum website. United Nations Group on the Information Society has been an important part of the VISIS process. It's been launched in 2003 and 2005 uh, phases and consists of 31 members of ANGES that have jointly coordinated, coordinating the activities and commitments to the Visit Section Lines implementation, also the alignment with the sustainable development uh, goals uh, processes. The current chair uh, is UNESCO, and vice chairs are ITU, UNCTAD, UNDP, and UNESCO. The annual meetings of ANGES have been held at the Visit Forum annual events. Partnership on measuring uh, ICTs for development is, has been launched in 2004 to improve the availability and quality of ICT data and indicators, particularly in the developing countries. And the current steering committee is made up of ITU, UNCTAD, and UIS. The ITU is chair of steering committee from January to June 2021, and the new report has been launched for 2021. Special initiatives and products are activities that are ongoing with the support of uh, several special tracks at the Visis Forum 2022, definitely. But this is an ongoing activity based on proposals from the stakeholders. So I would like to uh, briefly uh, present to you some of them uh, that have been uh, fruitful. One of them is the, the Visa Stock Taking Repository, Women in Technology. So using the Visa Stock Taking infrastructure for collecting uh, information, we have um, worked together with our stakeholders to launch this particular uh, and very needed reposit international repository to collect uh, all those um, women uh, experts in ICT uh, to join this repository. And by joining the, this, um, bring the opportunity for many of those who are looking for speakers or experts to join their activities that are looking for gender balanced uh, participation. So this is a new repository. Uh, we invite all of you to uh, nominate those women in tech who you believe should be promoted through the VISIS process, through the VISIS talk taking and be contacted by those in need. 
another uh, part of this uh, um, special initiative on the gender mainstreaming is the gender digital transformation partner that we are looking for. Please, if you would like to contribute and support our activity to also make the challenge of the VISIS Forum of 50-50 gender equal participation, please join us and contact VISIS team at IT. VISIS youth campaigns have been proposed at uh, the VISIS Forum 2021 and the VISIS youth campaigners have been uh, nominated. We are soon to launch uh, officially the VCC Youth Campaigns that will cover the three topics, ICTs and climate change, ICTs and youth empowerment, and ICTs and business. Our young colleagues who have been a part of the VCC Forum and VCC process in the past were nominated to lead these three, the coordination of these three uh, VCC Campaigns. And I invite all of you to also join us, follow the developments and join the VCS Youth Campaigns. It is very important that we provide this opportunity to amplify the voice of youth in the international development. This particular activity will enhance additionally the ICTs and youth special track at the VCS Forum. And uh, it will be an opportunity for all the youth to network and um, also meet uh, with uh, other VC stakeholders, participants, but beyond um, this kind of age limitations, we're also planning to hold several different uh, activities with the ICTs and older persons track to also work together with ICTs and gender mainstreaming. So please uh, follow us more for, for more information. VCS Forum has been an extra budgetary event since 2009. Everything that took place at the VCS Forum is to be thanked to those who have contributed to the VCS Fund and Trust. We would like to inform and invite all of you to promote this opportunity for those who are looking forward to contribute to the good use of ICT for development and to the uh, improved process of the VCS, VCS process altogether and VCS Forum especially. The VCS Funding Trust calls are available on the IT website. Uh, we do invite you to explore all the packages and contact the VCS team for more information. This is, again, uh, a reminder of the ongoing calls. So once again, uh, please take a note, contribute, promote our VCS prize calls, our open consultation process calls, also various VCS stock taking calls for VCS photo contest for the women in technology, for indigenous languages, for healthy aging innovation prize, which has been launched. Uh, all the ongoing calls, of course, um, are inviting all of you to not only contribute, but share this information on your websites and social media channels. Contact us for more information. The deadline for most of our calls is 7th of March, but make sure to note that the deadline for the business prizes is scheduled for the 21st of January. As I mentioned many times throughout this presentation, uh, we invite you to follow the business at the business uh, social media channels. Uh, we have been very active on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Also, we are reviving the group uh, on, on uh, Instagram, and we have the newsletter called This is Flash, to which you are all invited to subscribe. So this is uh, the end of the presentation that we have prepared for you for this first physical meeting of the open consultation process. Please note the relevant uh, links um, to more information about the history of this process, about the ongoing uh, this is forum activities and particularly also on the VCS prizes and stock taking and the SDGs um, websites. Uh, I would like to now uh, open the floor and see first whether we have Joe. Okay, uh, our colleague from UNESCO uh, has joined us. And um, Joe, we would like to hear a, a bit from you uh, on behalf of UNESCO. 
thank you, Vladimir. That, that was uh, amazing and informative. Um, and, and thank you to all uh, those of you who uh, joined the IGF call today uh, by our recording. Um, as Vladimir alluded to, examples, the richest form is, is of addressing tracks that progressively go this pace of trust and progress throughout ICT for development. Here at, at the IGF, in the big picture, our own steady progress of trust building around ICT for development should, should, not, should not really be taken for granted. It's important, obviously. And that's revealed um, as well uh, by the record number of participants we saw last year and the year before. And I risk um, stating the obvious to those that have worked with uh, Vladimir, Scarlet, Caravan, Ruth, and Tala, and many, many, many others. Obviously, uh, um, of course, Gitanjali, these are remarkable people. And my point is that the WISIS process is being um, built uh, year by year by, by people. And it's also about the execution of this process for progressively building trust around it uh, and the multi stakeholder model in particular. Now, there are two things I would add uh, about the 2002 WISIS forum, although Vladimir actually captured it very well. Um, first is uh, indigenous languages. This um, coming New Year's Day will mark the start of the United Nations International Decade for Indigenous Languages. Uh, there are 7,000 languages in the world, many, many endangered, uh, but there are only 200 or less languages on Facebook, which I believe is the most among social media platforms, less than 200 languages on Wikipedia, less than 200 available on Google Translate as well. This, and this is despite uh, some estimates that as many as 4,000 languages can be expressed um, by a writing system. Uh, Bitanji, um, Vladimir, and UNESCO, all, all my colleagues here, I uh, would like to dedicate a WISIS special prize around ICT for Indigenous languages and to organize a WISIS hackathon on, on that theme. Now, at this time, we do not have um, prize money or sponsors, but we are looking. And if this interests you, please uh, look for, for us. And we are looking to you as well to get uh, the word out. Some of you out there can already think of codes and apps that could either safeguard indigenous languages from the threats of the internet, or even make uh, indigenous languages survive and be preserved on the internet. And second and last point, uh, you, um, UNESCO's 192 member states just a week ago adopted a resolution on WISIS Plus 20, which is the intergovernmental review process in 2020, 2025. Um, I understand that UNESCO is the first UN agency to do this. Others will, will soon follow. Um, perhaps some of you may remember WISIS Plus 10, which was in 2015, maybe a little bit fresh in your minds. Um, what UNESCO Secretary has been committed to do this time is to work closely with the WISIS uh, co organizers to wrap up a stock taking process. The open consultation process may be a good way to start that type of multi stakeholder dialogue on the challenges and the opportunities uh, within the WISIS uh, action lines. Um, and this multi stakeholder uh, Exchange will feed into all our member states as we approach the 2025 review. So, um, takeaways of Indigenous Languages, Hackathon, and WISIS Prize. OCP is part of the WISIS Plus 20 review process uh, leading into 2025. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Joe, very much. It's great to have you with us. We were hoping uh, that you will be able to finally join us. Thank you. <laughs> for sharing, uh, and contributing to um, to the particular activities of UNESCO, including the the new resolution on WISIS Plus Twenty. Uh, surely, um, we will hear more from from UNESCO and other UN agencies in the coming in the coming years. So, once again, uh, colleagues, um, we have used this opportunity to present to you uh, from the side of the co-organizers of the VISIS Forum 2022, the ongoing activities, plans uh, to promote the calls for your action. Uh, I would uh, like to open the, the floor. You can use, uh, uh, you can, you know, 
send your questions in chat and uh, I would also already like to um, read some of them. Uh, thank you, Mark Carvel, for your um, message and for your question. Um, I see that um, your concern is to uh, explore more linkages with the IGF activities at the VISIS forum. And question that you have uh, that Mark has raised is, can some space be provided in the 2022 program for IGF intersessional presentations by dynamic coalitions? Mark is a policy advisor for DCISSS on cybersecurity standards and also the IGF policy networks on environment and meaningful access and the IGF best practice forums if uh, they wish to present their progress to the VISIS forum. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark, again for being with us today, for uh, sharing uh, your concern and raising this question. As I mentioned uh, uh, very early, uh, this is forum is a fully crowdsourced uh, platform and its uh, agenda and program are shaped by your proposals, uh, all stakeholders proposals and suggestions. So uh, we invite you and your colleagues to uh, already submit um, to the open consultation process. Uh, the online form is already available online. Um, take it uh, upon and submit your proposal for not only um, one of the offered uh, formats at the VISIS forum, but also propose a new format of the session that you believe would be beneficial for you and your community. We would love to uh, work more with you, of course. Uh, also, we have a question from uh, Aswini Satur, Satnur. Thank you very much for your message. Um, so, uh, it's just uh, appreciating uh, the presentation and looking forward to be working with us. And we do look forward um, to, uh, to seeing you at the VISIS Forum, uh, not only you, but many other um, of your com colleagues from your communities and, net and networks. Please, uh, we invite all of you to be uh, an amplifying voice of the VISIS Forum uh, with your networks and communities, uh, promote these opportunities, uh, many of uh, those joining us uh, lately are saying that uh, they have been missing this opportunity for the global promotion and networking with um, you know, numerous experts, decision makers in, this, in the ICT field. And um, as, as much as you know, we are putting all the effort through communicating on social media and the website, I believe uh, best ambassadors are those participants who have already participated and who are sharing uh, and promoting their participation to their networks and communities. Uh, there is one question from the room in Katowice. Uh, I would like to ask uh, our colleagues from IGF uh, to share the question with us. Um, thank you very much. My name is Nema Lugangira. I'm a member of parliament from Tanzania. Um, and I had just a few quick comments. My first reaction is to UNCTAD with regards to e-commerce. Um, e-commerce is particularly very important. However, when, you're to, when you come to developing countries, um, I just wanted to understand what is UNCTAD's um, strategy in, 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 in promoting e-commerce in developing countries where digital skills, digital literacy is still low, we yet lack uh, meaningful connectivity, issues of access um, to the internet, connectivity, price of the mobiles, price of the data, et cetera. But also I wanted to find out when you're talking about repository of women in tech, is it just women who are in ICT or does it also include um, maybe perhaps non-tech in terms of academ academia? but those women who are pushing for policy reforms, for example, parliamentarians and, and, and policy makers and the like, does, does that include them? Um, and then the issue of achieving 50-50 gender um, in the WISIS process, I think it's important to also make sure that we can, we can have, um, we can make the internet to be safe for everybody because it's a well-known fact a lot of women endure a lot of online abuse, whether they're business, whether it's you know, women traders, uh, women journalists, women parliamentarians, et cetera. So how, how does that also come into play? Um, lastly, we in Tanzania, um, 
we have a small hub uh, called Omuka Hub in the peripheral regions, and we're trying to bring in you know ICT and the older people. Um, ICT link being linked to climate change and the agricultural sector, but what are the opportunities um, within within this this community to provide capacity building and digital tools, etc. Thank you. As the first question was raised to Minerva, maybe um, you would like to. Um, oh, or was it to Scarlett? I'm sorry. Scarlett, um, the question on e-commerce, e uh, yes. like to address it. Thank you. So uh, regarding OMTAD's strategy, as you say, we, we don't have a strategy coming to the countries. We are an um, organization that works based on the demand of our member states. So we do get uh, quite, uh, quite a bit of requests to help countries uh, draft policies, assess uh, current policies or plan for future um, policies to promote e-commerce and the digital economy. We do have uh, frameworks that are available, technical assistance programs that are available. I'm going to post a link to our um, main page in uh, uh, of the program of the e-commerce and digital economy program if you want to get more details but uh, basically in terms of e-commerce itself we have a program called the uh, um, e-trade readiness assessments where uh, after request from a country we will go in and look at the key policy areas that influence an enabling environment for e-commerce and that includes those issues that you have mentioned, um, digital skills, uh, what is the infrastructure uh, in, in the country, what is the access from different groups, what is the legislation that is um, uh, framing that, uh, that digital uh, environment for trade. And uh, in each case, as you know, each country is its own uh, world in each case we assess how um, developed or not are these areas and how the country could um, encourage further development of e-commerce and, uh, and the digital economy but it's never an isolated um, uh, strategy or policy recommendation it is always in the context of the broader vision of the country in terms of digital development so it does not only look at the economic issue or the trade issue, but it looks at how can it support uh, the broader development uh, um, agenda in each country. So it's actually quite a lot to talk about and it could take a very long time. So I invite you to look further into our webpage to look what programs we have available and what frameworks we have already available as framework documents or reference documents for all the stakeholders, not only for the national um, uh, official uh, authorities, but also other uh, private stakeholders or uh, uh, non-government organizations that are present in the country or in the region. Thank you. I hope that answered uh, your question. Thank you. Thank you, Scarlett. Thank you for this question, um, colleague from Tanzania. Uh, you have touched upon uh, several very important uh, issues and aspects to which uh, all those who came together in 2003 and 2005 have thought through. Um, of course, you know, the technology has been changed uh, and developed uh, tremendously since then, uh, and many of the things have uh, perhaps um, improved. Some of things um, uh, are also having uh, more challenges than before, but this is something that um, we are all discussing and working together at the Business Forum uh, on annual uh, on annual basis. So, going back to your particular questions on women in tech uh, repository, everything we do is um, linked to the information and communication technologies, which are these days really you know, covering uh, almost all aspects of life. Even though people, some people, um, let's say, uh, as the data shows, um, more than one third are yet to be connected to internet. We are also considering them our stakeholders and even most important stakeholders that we need to you know, uh, get together to discuss how can they be connected. 
Same thing with your question on whether we can have um, maybe not particular uh, IC, you know, ICT experts, but the experts in uh, making policies. One of the VISIS action lines actually is covering uh, all about uh, regulation, policy making, laws. It's called enabling, enabling environment. So I, I, I would definitely invite you to explore the background of this VISIS action line and all the activities that have taken place. Uh, this particular action line is uh, collecting all the good ICT policies that are put in place on international, regional, national level. And there are many of uh, stakeholders who are actively contributing to this implementation of this action line. International Telecommunication Union, ITU, is the lead facilitator of this VISIS action line. And our colleagues from the development sector um, who are running uh, these issues of re re regulatory framework in the, in the ICT field um, are also someone who are contributing each year to this, to this process and also hosting events at the VISIS forum. In addition to this, uh, you have mentioned um, the uh, challenge that uh, we are all up for, 50-50, gender equality, at not only VISIS forum, at all panels, at all sessions, is um, uh, definitely something that we have been working since 2009. As much as we are promoting and inviting the community, it's always the community that needs to respond. At the same time, you are asking uh, how, uh, how secure uh, this uh, space is and uh, what are we working towards this. Uh, you should also know that one of the VISIS action lines is called Building Confidence and Security in the Use of ICTs. So again, those people in 2005 have really put their minds to when we're discussing uh, the 18 VISIS section lines, so they can cover all aspects at that time and even envisage what could be the challenges in the future. We are holding uh, regular uh, sessions at the VISIS forum and beyond. And one of the special tracks uh, that has been uh, uh, taking place at the VISIS forum is called cybersecurity. ITU, again, is the lead facilitator for this VISIS action line as well besides the one on enabling environment and the one on uh, information and communication infrastructure. So I do invite you to browse through this is forum uh, websites for each year, look into agenda, look, you know, type in the keywords, see what has been done and to uh, make a point um, to your question, uh, again, to remind you, everything that takes place at the business forum is being proposed by the stakeholders. So by you and your community, you go to the OCP, you submit and you say, this is what, who we are and what we are interested in. So your topics on the hub that you are having and activities, we would love to see you present, organize a workshop, bring your community, share your concerns. And then at the same time, see how you can also benefit from special track on older persons or special track on climate change or agriculture. As I mentioned, um, we are running a special track on all the persons at the VISIS Forum with several activities uh, with different stakeholders with whom you can uh, work with. You can benefit from joining uh, many of their sessions that of course are also capacity building related, but you can also contribute to, this, uh, to these tracks. One of the VISIS Youth campaigns is on climate action. And of course, this is not the only one because one of the VISIS action lines is called e-environment. And this is exactly what we deal with. And another uh, action line called e-agriculture is, is covering the topic of agriculture, the digital agriculture. We are currently working together with our colleagues from FAO. I am actually just uh, coming from the session where we are uh, listening to some of the pitching of the solutions to the FAO's global agri you know, challenges that we are also contributing to and who will also be presented at the uh, VISIS Forum 2022. And one of the special uh, um, initiatives that uh, is being currently shaped is called ICTs Against Hunger. We are yet to announce the details about this, but you should know that in 2018, this forum has hosted the ha special hackathon on ICT Against Hunger together with our FAO colleagues and other stakeholders. So there are things that are already there. There are things that we can uh, shape together or you can lead uh, coordinating and shaping. Um, some of these things uh, uh, for some communities uh, are already known, 
for uh, perhaps most are yet to be um, understood and uh, replicated. So we do invite you to look into various business outcomes, reports, publications for more information. All that we do um, at the business forum uh, has been uh, well recorded. So each session, uh, there is a recording online on a, on a dedicated web page. And uh, to uh, again give a point of how can we increase this capacity building, the last uh, year and a half has shown that uh, ICTs are indispensable in getting us together, still connected, running conferences, working together. So yes, we have been uh, we have the increased number of participants due to the virtual format. So those three thousand participants at the physical event in Geneva have turned into last year. 50,000 accumulative attendance, which is a really huge difference. Why the uh, community around the world has not used always available remote participation at the VCS forum sessions, uh, which uh, you know, has been handled by ITU uh, and which uh, ITU is uh, one of the uh, best examples uh, in the past and in the last year and a half, is something that now uh, is to be uh, analyzed and understood but most uh, likely the future uh, will be in a more hybrid format uh, following the challenging times. So there will be more space for capacity building at the VCS forum virtually for all those who cannot uh, join us physically in Geneva. Um, I hope I responded back uh, to our colleague from Tanzania. Please, uh, I invite you to explore the VCS forum 2022 and submit to the open consultation process and therefore take uh, uh, active participation and contribute uh, to, to, to various opportunities. I would like to um, go back to uh, the question from uh, Mark Carvel. And this question is um, for Joe. Uh, the question, Joe, is what uh, should the IGF do to prepare for versus plus 20 in 2025? Uh, should it initiate a dedicated business policy track? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark, for letting me. Um, well, you know, I would not venture to propose methods as such. I imagine um, our review would mirror the process of 2015, at least from a, a, you know, a process standpoint, um, but with an emphasis on closer collaboration, close collaboration among all the action line facilitators. Um, and an analogous type of events, uh, which was in June 2014, for OASIS Plus 10, uh, was organized by, by ITU and UNESCO and UNDP and OSTA, uh, but with the engagement as well of at least 15 UN agencies and all the regional commissions and so forth. Um, and it involved endorsing several documents. So here we are, like two, right, more than a year before they got to the, you know, the, the zero draft uh, in New York. Um, and we produced several documents. I, I don't have to go into them, but but um, but uh, you know there are eight UN agencies that are these facilitators, um, and more than twenty other UN entities that actively support mechanisms, including through CSDP, right, which, which exists, um, and. By the way, you know, have, have no fear. I'm overly. I know I'm overly focusing on UN intergovernmental methods. Um, um, but um, one outcome, uh, one sort of tangential outcome of our WISIS Plus Ten review within UNESCO was the adoption by our general conference of what we call the Rome Principles for Internet Governance. And uh, Rome is a heuristic uh, for rights-based, open accessible and multi-stakeholder. It's actually a set of 300 practical indicators and more than 30 member states um, have implemented it at all levels of development, actually in all continents at this point. Um, but the um, point to connect to is, is multi-stakeholder and, and open. I think, I think you know, we've done it before in 2015, but not so long ago. Um, some really radical things have happened in you know, growth. Um, Internet access of over a billion by like, which we all estimate. Um, so, and, and of course, a lot of country technology that you're all aware of, um, referring back to uh, the internet, including through uh, an ethical lens as well. So, um, what we would, what I can 
can imagine we would do, and, and sorry I'm not giving you a wiki watch yet, but uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know, the, I won't pretend to say precisely what we'll do, but what we will do will be multi-stakeholder. That's something and very cooperative, but also among the UN. This is one of the things that what our members do. Thank you, Joe, very much. Uh, thank you, Mark, for your question. Uh, there is um, plenty of time for discussing, uh, uh, negotiating, uh, proposing um, what will take place um, at the Versus Forum 2022. Let's start with this event and then beyond that. Um, I would like to also thank to all of you who have been with us today. Uh, it's been a very successful session. Uh, I would like to thank all the colleagues from the co-organizers, uh, Minerva, Scarlett, and Joe. Thank you very much for joining us um, at the IGF and at this OCP meeting. And uh, I look forward to be working with you on many different uh, collaborations that uh, you have shared today. And we all look forward to receiving the submissions to the open consultation process from the community, uh, reach out to us individually or to the VCS uh, team at ITU for anything uh, that you would like to clarify or any questions that you might have. Use this global opportunity to promote the ICT work of your communities and networks. Uh, submit to OCP, submit for the VCS prizes, join us next year, help us shape the program and agenda, and uh, we look forward to our next meeting where we will be presenting the next developments and news on the ongoing plans towards the VCS Forum 2022. The next meeting is scheduled to take place on 31st of January. Until then, uh, I wish you uh, great holidays for those who are celebrating a great uh, winter or uh, summer time uh, for those who are joining us from the hemisphere and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Goodbye from virtually from Geneva and uh, all the good luck uh, to colleagues uh, at the IGF. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.